What ridiculous thing do people brag about for some reason? I've noticed in mom groups the women like to flex by saying how long their baby or kid hasn't been without them. For example, my kid is seven and I've never spent a night without her. How savage they are. AKA how badly they effed someone over. Some people rise up by improving themselves. Others do it by bringing those around them down. I usually assume the brag is a defense mechanism, show of power to compensate for something. I have a couple ex-co-workers who love to brag about how many people they have fired. They got fired. I worked with this chick, she was kind of my superior, but not directly, she had so many anecdotes about how she put someone down and how she told someone off. Every time she talked to anyone, she needed to go and brag about how she told them. That's when she wasn't trying to manipulate everything like some criminal mastermind in a dull everyday life she was a effed up person but in a way I liked her. Needless to say, I had the last laugh. Alan Partridge Being OCD even though they are not obsessive compulsive at all. Like being OCD is some organizational badge of honor. Yes. The casual use of that medical ailment to show how much attention to detail you have is awful. It's not even remotely the same thing. True OCD isn't a choice and it can negatively impact your life in so many serious ways. It's just like people who flippantly say they're bipolar when they just mean they're indecisive. It's so disrespectful to people suffering from the real disease. I had a co-worker who thought I was flexing on them by using chopsticks. Plot twist, he was eating Mexican food. At that point, you are just over flexing. Double twist, it was tortilla soup. I'm not a smart guy but I used to read a lot as a kid, not really anymore sadly, I work in a blue collar, working class field and some of the other guys will think I'm flexing on them by using big words. An example would be, contrived. Haha. Ha. I had a co-worker once snarl at me about how I was showing off my college degree, with my big old vocabulary. Like, dude. I didn't even have one. Sorry I like books. They're free, FFS. I come from a really crafty town and was once called a snob in the waiting room at the dentist for reading a book while I waited. It was a normal popular fiction book and someone felt the need to say out loud that they assumed I thought I was better than them for reading a book. What's funny is they probably do think you are better than them. They just manipulated their insecurity in a way to attack you for it, like it's your fault they think that way. I'd probably have tried to teach them to read too if they'd asked nicely. That is the kind of comeback you imagine three weeks later while showering. How self-centered do you have to be to see a complete stranger reading a book in a waiting room and think they are trying to offend you in particular? I live in a pretty rural, less educated area and have had this happen to me too. Using a word with more than two syllables made them think I was trying to be a smartass. Sounds like where I grew up. My brother was hit by a drunk driver years ago, and my family took the drunk to court. The jury was made up of folks I had known my entire life. I had to pass notes to the R attorney several times, reminding him that several of the jurors dropped out in 8th grade to farm. Using big city words was not going to win him any points with those folks. I'm curious, what was the outcome? I'm assuming it went something like, Your Honor, I'm just a simple hyper chicken from a backwoods asteroid. This is why Kevin Hart scene and 40-year-old virgin is the best. After one of the characters used words like condescending and amicably Kevin respond you're using a lot of big words, and since I don't understand them, I'm going to take it as a sign of disrespect. He was an unknown when the movie came out but doing stand-up, that entire scene made me go watch him live. I've had people accuse me of using big words, and I don't know how to tell them they're not big words without revealing I really do think they're a bunch of dumb Fs. Honestly, not knowing what a word doesn't mean you're dumb. But giving people crap when you don't know a word makes it way more likely. Absolutely. When somebody doesn't know what something means they'll usually just say, Sorry, what does that mean? Not Mr. Big Words. Ooh. Someone swallowed a dictionary. Someone said this to me at work when I used the word amiable. What do you mean am I able? Of course I am. How very idiocracy of them. 
Welcome to Costco, I love you. I've had the same. I read a book about a guy in jail who took classes and one of the teachers used big words. The guys taking the class asked the teacher to use words they understand, and he said, I'm not going to bring down my vocabulary. But you can learn, just look up the words you don't know, and soon you won't have as many you don't know. I took that to heart and now I don't bring my vocabulary down. But I will, without judgment, define what I said if someone, usually my husband, asks what I meant. We had to have a talk, because he thought he was dumb and I was making fun of how dumb he was for using big words. He isn't dumb, just not a big reader. Knowledge is different from intelligence. And I don't call him out if he uses a word wrong, just tell him one on one that it was used the wrong way, and tell him a better way to use said word. I don't even think he realizes his vocabulary has grown as well. When I was in second grade, my teacher had us get those steno notepads and whenever we didn't know what a word meant in class or when we were reading we had to write it down and then look up the definitions by the end of the week. This stuck with me throughout all of my schooling and it definitely had an impact. My husband also felt, sometimes still does, what yours did. Narcissism 101 Anything someone else does that could attract the smallest amount of attention is a personal attack. I came out as gay a couple years ago and I was getting some attention from friends and family, nothing mean, they were all just curious, I guess my friend noticed and one day asked if I was gay, and suddenly came out, would you be mad that I took the attention away from you? With this crap eating grin on their face. Like WTF, I was so caught off guard by that question. Long story short, we're not friends anymore. Not gonna lie, I read that as I came out as a gay couple and spent a few seconds trying to work out the logistics of being a gay couple. Well, I love myself and me and myself are the same sex, so that makes me a gay couple? Somebody told me to go F myself so I did, person shrugging, fair skin, female sign. Wow. Although the best response would be to be immediately supportive of him and see how far that goes. What the F? Lamau. How little time they have. It's annoying how they'd be bewildered about how people would have time to watch films or read books and make comments about how they could never find the time but then I'd see them on be on social media for 8 plus, hours. Original poster replies. Yes, they're like I wish I had time for those completely manageable things, you're so lucky, I'm just so busy all the time every single minute of every single day. I once asked a colleague if she had read anything good lately. Her answer, I can tell you don't have kids. Yes. 100%, I don't have time to watch TV. Yes, you do. You just do other things. Which is fine, but don't act as if you don't have time. The other version I like is, hobby, is such a waste of time. Proceeds to watch sports and news all day every day. Not taking vacation days. I hate this workaholic aspect of American culture. We need to change it. While work is obviously important, there is more to life than work and productivity. It's as confusing to me as a Brit. Everyone here always looks forward to their holidays slash vacations and I get hounded by my workplace to make sure I've taken all my annual leave days. I've never heard of someone purposefully not taking their holiday, it's just bonkers to me. I'm also British, and I'm literally leaving work an hour early every day this week because I had exactly 5 hours of leave left. It wasn't enough for a full day off, but my managers wouldn't have let me not take it even if I'd wanted to. So they arranged this for me. Literally, since January they've been hounding all of us to use up leave before the leave year resets on April 1st. Most people had a lot left because nobody was really using any last year because they were holding out for the end of lockdown but even with a huge backlog they found a way for everyone to use up every last minute. Using leave is expected, and not using it is 100%, not seen as anything to be proud of here. That's great. I also sometimes get an afternoon off here and there if I had to stay late a for a few days etc. We're so lucky we have this attitude to time off in the UK I can't imagine how stressed I'd be if I had to work 60 to 70 hour weeks constantly, and or have no proper time off. I always come back to work so refreshed and productive after a week off, or even a long weekend. I love my job, but time off is so important. If you think American working culture is bad just hop west over the Pacific and visit Japan. Next Level Workaholics 
People don't retire because they don't want society to look down on them for being lazy. Probably a bunch of other Asian countries but I only know Japan for sure. Asian here. Japan, Korea, Singapore, and Philippines. Especially in the Philippines where I worked for a decade, taking vacation and days off, even medical reasons, are frowned upon. I've experienced many times how my former bosses would call me at 6 a.m. on Sundays to troubleshoot a minor issue that could wait for Monday. I have friends in the IT sector working until 11 p.m. on weekends or sometimes even half past midnight, during Christmas, and public holidays without extra pay. I made the mistake of asking a young lawyer in Seoul what she did when she wasn't working. Sleep was the answer. Oh, screw that. I'm the type of guy to actually save up and use his max vacation days at every opportunity. I don't care how bad it makes me look, I earned a break, and I intend to have it. On top of that, the US needs to adapt to allowing mandatory vacation days. Almost every other first world country does it, with some giving as much as a full month. It's a brutal joke. I always unplug for vacations, it has made people I worked with mad, but it's my time. I also always turn off my cell phone when I come home. If there is an emergency, we have a landline. Anyone else like to check their work emails on vacation, not to respond, but to feel good about all the bullcrap you get to miss out on? Nope, because I don't use my personal phone for work, big company, it's a hassle that I don't need, and I don't bring my laptop on vacation. I can almost get this one because my company pays out unused vacation days two weeks before Christmas. But people that brag about not taking sick days? F off, you play grat. At my job sick leave builds up indefinitely, and you can count sick leave towards your retirement, so you can retire earlier. People hoard it like a dragon with his gold and come in sick all the time. It's annoying as hell. My dad had this at his job. He hoarded sick days for decades. In 20 years, I never witnessed him use a sick day. After 37 years on the job, as a lieutenant for the final 10, in corrections, do you know what that earned him? He retired six months early from built up sick days. That's it. Six effing months and a pat on the back. Yeah that's how it works. It always boggles my mind how kids of rich parents flex their money. Like you didn't do anything. Six figures I was only four. As someone who grew up with very little, I always had basics, thankfully, but anything beyond that was my responsibility, this has always been a sore spot for me. Even as an adult who has slash can afford nice things now, I'm still very aware of disparity. I have become hypersensitive to make sure that I'm not doing that to others, through myself or kids. Being a responsible parent. Bitch. That's the minimum standard. I take care of my kids. You're supposed to you dumb mother effer. Chris Rock. What you want? A cookie? I have a 17 year old daughter and I get tired of people acting like I'm a top tier father because I do things like take her shopping, tell her I'm proud of her when she tries her best, or make time in the evening with her for TV or a game. It's the bare effing minimum. The reason we have such crafty dads these days is because people expect literally nothing from them. We act like if they stick around, they're good dads. F that. Moms hate this for you too what irks me on top of that is when a dad is responsible and involved like you are and they tell the mom that she's so lucky as if she's subpar to other moms who have to do it all to compensate for their uninvolved husbands. What a crap move. Celebrate good relationships and stop setting the bar so low. It's toxic and insulting to everyone. I'm trying to stop saying I'm lucky for having a husband who parents well. I just don't know what else to say that conveys my gratitude while not putting him on a pedestal. He doesn't brag about himself or anything, but I do want him and others to know I appreciate him. Try grateful or thankful. It shows it's less a random act of chance and more so that you recognize that, they improve your life and make you a happier person by all they do in it. This just made me tear up, I wish my father would make time for me or tell me he's proud of me. Luckily, I have a really awesome uncle who listens to me and understands me. When I see this, it's because they're typically feeling guilty for failing somewhere, somehow. As a parent, I am completely aware of the fact that all parents make mistakes. Myself included. However, 
Those I see that have to let everyone else know what a great parent they are is because, in fact, they are not a great parent. And it's not just a mistake they made but a continuous lifestyle. I don't really recall ever seeing parents that are genuinely doing their best, and doing a pretty great job at that, going on about what an amazing parent they are. There's a correlation there. And any man who must say I am king is no true king at all. George R. R. Martin, A Storm of Swords People who brag about the amount of weed they can smoke and or how much alcohol they can drink. I brag about how drunk I can get on a small amount of alcohol. Being a lightweight is financially responsible. Someone once bragged to me about how much prescribed weed they smoked because of their chronic depression. Honestly, I didn't care about how much they smoked until they added that in. So I tried shifting the conversation to how he was really doing and started dropping and I don't tell anyone this. Apparently, not even his doctor. I know depression is complicated and it's far from take this you'll be fine. However, your illness making you do a lot of X is not an accomplishment, it's a sign that it isn't working and maybe try something else or in addition. Edit, and two is. How they don't read. Who's bragging about this and why would they think this is a positive attribute? There was a common attitude among my classmates that reading is for losers and nerds only. I still meet adults who say crap like laughing out loud I never read a book. If it's that good, they'll make a movie about it anyway. Because no movie based on a great book has ever sucked. Damn, I wish they'd make a movie based on Aragon, it'll be awesome. As a working adult who's also going to school, I am sad that I don't have the energy to read for fun anymore. I read a lot for work and school. It makes me sad when people say they just don't read. As an author, I can't stand this one, but yes, I will confirm that even adults, when they hear I'm an author, will probably inform me that they don't read. I've even been mocked for writing sci-fi and fantasy because that's all make-believe, so you must not know anything. You have to know a lot to make a story real. My writing is not where the ignorance lies, that's for certain. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.